If you were trapped on a cliff thousands of feet high with a group of preppy psychos trying to hunt you down, what would you do? They say it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop at the end. But for Kelly here, gravity is about to be the least of her worries. I hope you're not afraid of heights, because we're here to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the bro code killers in the ledge. This girl is about to have an experience that she'll never forget. These two lifelong friends, Kelly and Sophie, are on a rock climbing trip to the Dolomites, a legendary mountain range in northwestern Italy known around the world for their awe-inspiring views and challenging ascents. The peaceful afternoon is suddenly interrupted when a truck full of New York City finance bros comes whipping into the campsite shouting and blasting music like they own the place. One of these bros in particular immediately locks eyes with Sophie as they share a moment, but she has no idea that by the end of the night, he's going to turn into an absolute psychopath. About three minutes later, the guy shows up at their door and introduces himself as Josh, before inviting them over for some brewskis with him and the boys. Kelly here isn't remotely interested. After all, she came here to climb rocks, not trade stocks. But Sophie must have a thing for trust fund babies with expensive trucks and cheap pickup lines, because for her, it's love at first sight. Eventually, Sophie manages to convince Kelly to take them up on the offer, promising that they'll only stay for one drink but that was their biggest mistake. Well, one drink quickly turns into several until Kelly here decides that she wants to head back to the cabin. As she gets up to leave, Josh grabs her by the wrist and tries to pressure her into staying, but the others tell him to let her go. A few drinks later, Josh and Sophie start making out. When she gets up to go to the bathroom, his boys finally tell him to cool off, reminding him that he's supposed to be engaged, but he throws it right back in their faces and follows her out into the woods. Sure enough, Josh starts trying to force himself onto Sophie the moment that he catches her alone, but she fights back and scratches his face as she tries to get away. Hearing her scream, this guy Reynolds comes running and tackles Josh off of her, giving Sophie a chance to escape into the woods. The others can tell that this isn't going to look good, so they decide that they need to get to her and explain that it was all just a misunderstanding before she has a chance to call the police. Okay, it looks like Sophie here is in trouble. This may have started out as a fun night depending on which one of the girls that you ask, but now she's on her own being chased through the woods by a group of half-drunk former frat boys. And there's no telling what they're going to do if they catch her. Sophie needs to ditch these weirdos fast, and she needs to make the right moves if she's going to escape. Now, this may seem obvious, but the first thing that I'd try to do in this situation is contact some help. As a millennial, there's a good chance that she has her phone on her 24 seven, especially on a trip like this where there are so many opportunities to get some fire picks for the gram. If she does have her phone and has cell service, then she needs to immediately contact the police. When traveling, you should always know what phone number to call to get in touch with local emergency services, just in case you're ever involved in a nightmare situation like this one. In Italy, where they are now, the equivalent of dialing 911 is calling 112. By calling them as soon as possible, she can explain her side of the story and ensure that law enforcement officers are on their way. This won't solve everything though, because even if she can still get in contact with the police, it's still going to be a while before help arrives. Plus, there's always a chance that these creeps could change their strategy and decide to go after Kelly instead. With this in mind, she needs to do whatever she can to shake Josh and his friends here, and then regroup with Kelly as soon as possible. You've probably heard the expression, you can run, but you can't hide. But in this situation, the exact opposite is true. In a chase like this, your pursuers are much less likely to expect for you to hide than keep moving. So using this to her advantage might be Sophie's best bet to lose them. First off, she should remove any bright colored clothing like that big red jacket that makes her stand out. Also get rid of any jewelry that reflects light. That way she'll have a better chance of successfully staying hidden. She can also use anything that she's getting rid of to create a fake trail for them to follow, which should hopefully throw Josh and his boys off. 
While they can still see her, Sophie should make it seem as if she's headed in one direction, like deeper into the woods, before using the terrain to break their line of sight, and then abruptly changing course. As long as she was out of their view when she changed directions, the boys will most likely continue searching for her in the direction that she was originally running, leading them on a wild goose chase further and further away from where she actually is. When she moves between hiding spots, she'll want to keep a low profile by literally staying as low to the ground as she can to make herself harder to spot. So besides sight, she'll need to be careful that the sounds she makes don't give her away. But this could also work to her advantage. The key is to move in careful bursts only a short distance at a time and listen carefully for the sounds made by her pursuers so that she'll know where they are without having to physically see them. With a well-timed throw of a rock or branch, she can also use sound to draw attention away from her location in a pinch. Camouflage is one of the top adaptations used by wild animals to both hide themselves from predators and get the jump on prey. So it's time to take a page out of Mother Nature's book and get dirty. Covering herself with mud and soil will make Sophie significantly harder to track down. And she can also use the leaf litter and downed tree limbs all around her to create concealment and disappear into the forest, like Predator. Since she's an avid climber, it might even help to climb up a tree. Most people won't look up, although this could leave her trapped if they happen to notice. Look, however she does it, she needs to head back to the cabin and regroup with Kelly ASAP before these boozed up bozos get any more bright ideas. If the worst should happen and they're able to catch her, then the only thing for Sophie to do is cooperate until the situation hopefully calms down and then call for help as soon as she has another opportunity. Unfortunately for her though, things are about to take an even more horrifying turn. Believe it or not, it turns out that four strange men chasing her through the forest at night while shouting, there she is, get her, doesn't exactly make Sophie feel safe and she decides that she'd rather keep running. This guy, Zack, manages to grab her from behind, but she bites down on his hand to escape. Sophie puts up a good fight, but unfortunately they have her cornered, and that's when Josh here decks her straight in the face, sending her falling off of a cliff. Rushing down to the bottom, the boys find Sophie badly injured, but still alive, and begging for their help. Reynolds tries to call the police, but Josh quickly grabs his phone and throws it even further down. Panicking, he looks to the others for help, but this guy Taylor is a lawyer and says that, based on the evidence, they'd all be facing charges for attempted murder. Psycho that he is, Josh decides that the only logical solution is to turn this attempted murder into a successful murder. Picking up a large stone, he crouches over Sophie and brings it down on her head, before forcing the others to do the same and rubbing the blood onto Reynolds' hands. That way, they're all in this together. That makes one down, with five more to go. Meanwhile, the commotion finally wakes up Kelly, who arrives on the scene just as the four guys toss her friend's body even further down the cliff. Horrified, Kelly screams out, causing the boys to realize that she got them on camera, and in an instant, the chase is on. Kelly flees back into the woods with the others in close pursuit. Ducking behind a rock, she listens in as Josh orders the boys to split up and continue searching. Once it looks like the coast is clear, Kelly sprints back towards the cabin, only to run straight into one of the guys. Lucky for her, it's just Reynolds, and he decides to let her go without calling the others. With Josh closing in, she quickly quickly grabs whatever gear that she can and takes off running towards the mountain. Okay, this is terrifying. Kelly just watched these creeps throw her best friend off of a cliff. And now that they know that she saw them, it's probably safe to assume that they aren't chasing her down just to apologize and turn themselves in. These guys are going to kill her if they have the chance. And since she's so heavily outnumbered, Kelly here needs to avoid getting into an open fight with them for as long as she can. The thing is, running out into the wilderness away from any help or supplies isn't exactly the best option either, but it might have been the only choice that she had. So what should she do? Again, the most important thing that she can do right now is try to contact emergency services as soon as possible. She didn't have much time back at the cabin other than to grab her gear and go, but as luck would have it, her phone is actually in her backpack. 
Which means that if she could break their line of sight and find a place to hide out using the steps that we discussed before, she should be able to call the police and quickly let them know that she needs help. It could also be possible to barricade herself in the cabin and try to hold them off while she made the call. But there's a strong possibility that they would have gotten to her before help did. So taking the opportunity to put as much distance between the guys and her as possible was probably worth the risk. Now, running may have been her only choice, but that doesn't mean that she can't still be strategic about it. Instead of just running aimlessly out into the woods, I'd suggest leading them away from the cabins before ducking out of their line of vision and then abruptly turning back around. By sending the four of them on an aimless search out into the middle of nowhere, this would buy Kelly an opportunity to circle back towards the cabins, which is where she's going to have her best odds of survival. If she hides out nearby until she's sure that Josh and the boys are gone, then she should be able to head back into her cabin and get more gear, or hide out in there once they've already searched it and decided that she must be somewhere else. Now this is gonna be risky, but she could also try her luck at getting into their cabin instead. Not only is this the place that they'd least expect for her to hide, but this would give her the chance to sabotage their equipment or set a booby trap to even the odds. Best of all, she might even find the keys to their truck inside, and then she'd be able to use that to get away. Going back to the campsite would also be the most likely location for her to find immediate help. If there are any other campers nearby, or a ranger station, or welcome center for the campground, then she could get in touch with them and let them know what's going on which would lead to her getting help much faster than calling the police and having to wait for them to get there. With all that being said, if worst comes to worst and escaping isn't working out, then Kelly here has every right to go full Rambo mode on these guys because after all, they drew first blood. They drew first blood, not me. The only problem here is that she could be a trained MMA fighter, and the odds of her winning a four-on-one against them still wouldn't look very good. But them splitting up to search for her actually helps with this. I'd focus my attention on Josh, since he's the ringleader, and uh, try to get him into a situation where I could ambush him while he's on his own. One good crack with a big stick or a rock should do the trick. And with their leader down, there's a small chance that the others might decide to give up. Back at the campfire earlier that night, Josh was showing off a flashy watch with a built-in distress beacon that will send his location to emergency services when activated. So once he was down for the count, I'd take that thing to use it to call for help as well. One last thing that she needs to consider is a way to secure the evidence. Right now, if she loses the camera, or it breaks, then the proof of what really happened to her friend will be lost forever. So, if she has the opportunity, I'd quickly try to transfer the footage from her camera to her phone, and then upload it to the internet for the whole world to see. That way, even if they somehow managed to get a hold of me, the evidence would still be out there. The sun rises as Kelly reaches the base of the cliff and begins free soloing her way straight up the sheer face. The boys are still right behind her, but only Taylor has the experience to make the ascent, so he climbs up after her while Josh and the others egg him on from below. It isn't long before he catches up, but Kelly manages to shake him off. Unfortunately, she drops both the camera and most of her gear in the process. Moving quickly, she retrieves the camera and shoves it in her backpack before continuing to climb her way upwards. A few moments later, Taylor catches her again, but this time when she kicks him off, he isn't able to keep his grip and plummets some 40 feet down to the rocky ground below. Taylor survives the fall, although the fractured bone protruding from his leg makes it clear that he won't be doing any more climbing for quite a while. Furious, Josh shouts up at Kelly that he's going to get her no matter what it takes. For now though, she's managed to lose them, but Josh won't be giving up so easily. Okay, this is a mistake, but at least with Taylor down, it's now only a three on one. Kelly may think that this was her best chance since she's the more experienced climber. But I have to ask, where exactly is she planning to go from here? Continuing to climb up is only going to leave her trapped, so she needs to start considering her options more wisely. You know, if she's familiar with the area, then Kelly should know that there is a public refuge, which is essentially like a hotel for climbers, 
due north of the mountain. It's gonna be difficult to reach, but at least at this point, it may be the closest form of civilization that she's got, and aiming for it at least gives her a definitive goal to work towards. Besides the fact that climbing straight up will eventually leave her with nowhere left to run, free climbing alone and under pressure like Kelly's doing here is also incredibly dangerous for a number of reasons. First off, there's gravity, obviously. If you need more clarification on that one, then just ask Taylor how he's doing. Also, without an appropriate supply of water, it's only a matter of time before she'll be facing dehydration, which can quickly lead to death under these circumstances. Although it's not a problem just yet, altitude sickness caused by the low oxygen levels can start at around 8,000 feet of elevation. For reference, the mountain that she's climbing, Antaleo, is over 10,000 feet at its peak. This can result in headaches, nausea, and dizziness, which are all very bad when climbing without equipment and being chased down by insane killers. So in addition to altitude sickness, the higher that she goes, the colder that it's going to get, leading to the onset of hypothermia and frostbite. The worse that this gets, she'll eventually lose consciousness, and the reason why that's bad should be pretty self-explanatory. Of course, there's also mother nature to consider. Bad weather can exacerbate the onset of hypothermia, as well as reduce visibility and make for slippery conditions, which could end with her getting lost, or worse, taking a fall. Additionally, wildlife like brown bears and a few species of venomous snakes are known to inhabit the area. Although encountering any of these animals is unlikely, brown bears have in fact killed hikers in the Dolomites before. And if she accidentally happens to grab onto a snake and gets bit, their venom can be fatal if left untreated for too long. To be fair, she's got more immediate problems than any of these right now. But if her game plan is to keep going up the mountain, then the dangers are something that she needs to take into account. Like I said before, breaking their line of sight was the most essential thing that she could do, and the good news is that they just did it for her. While they're taking Taylor back to the cabin, I'd suggest quickly changing course and finding a place to hide out where she could still keep track of their movements. That way, once they came back and started climbing up after her, she can double back to the cabins and try to get help in one of the ways that we already discussed. The others rush Taylor back to the cabin to give him some emergency first aid, and by first aid, I mean a bunch of painkillers and alcohol. Once he's good and boozed up, they tell him to keep the fire going so that they'll know from the smoke that he's still alive and to call the police if they aren't back in 24 hours. With that, Josh, Zach, and Reynolds grab their gear and head back out, leaving Taylor behind to fend for himself. Meanwhile, Kelly positions herself in a cleft in the rock and takes advantage of the downtime to get a sip of water. After making a tactical swap into her climbing shoes, she quickly looks through the gear that she has left, trying to figure out what to do next. Seeing the camera brings back memories of the good times with Sophie, and the anger that she feels gives her the motivation to keep pushing forward. Down at the base, the guys return and find Kelly's phone. They can see that the cliff is too steep for her to climb back down without any gear, and without a jacket. Josh guesses that she'll likely freeze to death long before they even get near her. Still, they're determined to go after her, but aren't skilled enough to follow Kelly's exact route, so they decide to take an easier trail and cut her off further up the mountain. Just when they're about to start, Josh says that he forgot his gloves at the cabin, and doubles back to grab them while the others wait there for him to return. With Josh gone, Reynolds here starts trying to convince his friend to call for help, pointing out that, although he says that they're all in it together, this whole debacle was really only Josh's fault. Unfortunately, Zack isn't going for it, and decides to find out what's taking Josh so long. Zack arrives at the cabin just as Josh is walking out, and the man is furious with him for not waiting at the base like he was told. The two of them head back together, with Zack never realizing the truth about what happened. The missing gloves were just a cover story, and Josh here has actually killed Taylor, executing his own friend just to tie up the potential loose end. That makes two down, with four more to go. Kelly continues making her way towards the summit, with the climb becoming more and more difficult the higher that she goes. Digging deep, she remembers the training that her fiancé Luca taught her, and uses his advice to keep making slow but steady progress. Suddenly, she nearly grabs right onto a large snake that's clinging to the rocks just above her. At these heights, losing her grip would mean certain death, and Kelly has no choice but to remain perfectly still as it slithers over her hand. 
Luckily, the snake doesn't bite, and she's able to continue onwards once it's safely out of reach. A bit further up, Kelly perches herself on a stone and takes a very aggressive sip of water. As she goes to put it back in her bag, the combination of adrenaline and exhaustion causes her to slip up and drop the bottle right over the edge. Okay, that was a bit of a dumb mistake, but watching Kelly's only source of water go crashing down the mountainside actually gives me an idea. She hasn't had many opportunities to turn the tables on these guys yet, but why not use the high ground to her advantage and start fighting back? From her position right now, she could easily just start chucking things like loose rocks, her spare shoes, and any other extra gear that she has straight down onto their heads. Not only would this make her more difficult to chase, but it could knock them off balance and cause them to fall to their deaths. Also, seeing that Josh has Kelly's still working phone brings another mistake to mind. When going on a potentially dangerous trip like this one, you should always have at least one emergency contact back at home who you're planning to keep in touch with the whole time. And who knows to call for help if you suddenly stop responding. It's a little too late for that, of course, but if Kelly and Sophie had gone into this trip more prepared, then rescue might have already been on its way without her even needing to call for herself. Soon, Kelly arrives at her next obstacle, a long gap with a fixed rope hanging just out of reach. She tries stretching as far as she can, but there's no way that she'll be able to grab a hold, forcing her to come up with a new plan. Thinking it through, she bites a hole in the fabric of her backpack and pulls out a thin piece of wire from its frame. By making a hook in one end, she's able to pull the rope close enough that she can finally reach, and uses the leverage to launch herself upwards to the next foothold. Up ahead, Kelly finds an abandoned bivouac shelter that was left behind by some local climbers the day before. The way forward is too treacherous for her to handle right now, so she decides to take a break and regain some strength while she has the chance. Just then, the boys make it to the top of the ledge right above her, having finally managed to cut her off. Josh immediately starts tormenting her again and throws a rope down in front of her, giving her one last chance to hand over the camera. Instead, Kelly sends them up a handwritten F.U., infuriating Josh here even more. He is pissed, but he also knows that Kelly is trapped. She can't go down, and if she comes up, then they'll be there to grab her. So all that they need to do is sit and wait. Okay, Sending a note up was cool and all, but Kelly might have just missed an opportunity to level the playing field a little. After all, the best way to send a message here would be to take one of these creeps out. Up on the ledge, Reynolds here had the rope completely wrapped around his body and was in the back of the line behind Josh and Zach. It would have been risky, but if Kelly had grabbed onto the rope and then pulled as hard as she could while still keeping her balance, she might have been able to cause Reynolds to stumble forward. And if she got really lucky, maybe send one of the others or all three of them crashing over the edge to their deaths. Is it a long shot? Definitely. But with so few opportunities to fight back, she needs to be taking advantage of any chance that she gets. While Josh is busy setting up camp, Reynolds notices that there's no smoke coming from the cabin and points out that even if they can get the camera, Kelly here is still a witness, which means that there's no way that Josh is going to let her live. He's right, but Zach refuses to listen, still hanging on to some misplaced sense of loyalty to his friend. This is a huge mistake, and in a matter of hours, he's going to end up paying the price. As the sun begins to set, Kelly takes out a climbing device called a cam and hooks it into a slot in the rocks above, before pulling the shelter closer to her. Inside, she finds a steel canteen, although it's unfortunately bone dry, and a small metal shiv that will come in handy later. On the ledge above, Zach and Reynolds are making dinner while Josh continues taunting Kelly and offering her some food if she gives up. Searching through her phone, they realize that Kelly's fiance fell to his death while attempting this very same climb with her exactly one year earlier, which gives Josh here an idea. While she's having a snack in the shelter, Josh decides to urinate down onto the tent and begins taunting her about Luca's death before wishing her a sarcastic goodnight. The boys wait until it seems like they've all gone to bed, only for them to throw a heavy bag that's tied to a rope over the edge. The bag crashes into the side of the tent over and over again, causing Kelly to fall out and eventually lose her grip. Luckily, she manages to hold on to the bag itself as she's dangling above a drop to certain death. 
Leaning over the edge, Josh realizes that she's vulnerable and quickly orders the others to throw him a knife. Slicing the rope just as Kelly grabs back onto the cliff, narrowly escaping from the fall. It's an incredibly close call, and with nowhere else to go, Kelly climbs back into the shelter to wait for another opportunity. Okay, that was a bit too close for comfort. Despite everything that these creeps have tried so far, Kelly here has been managing to survive with a healthy amount of dumb luck and plot armor. But in the process, she missed a potential opportunity to throw them off. This is gonna sound a, a bit silly, but since they can't see her, I might have tried screaming out in a way that made it sound like I fell and hopefully trick them into thinking that I was dead. There's no guaranteeing that it would work, but you never know until you try, and if she was really lucky or they're really dumb, she might just convince them that they'd finished the job, getting them to give up the chase and leaving her to focus on just surviving the elements instead of having to also contend with a bunch of deranged attackers. Kelly briefly falls asleep from exhaustion only to wake up to some suspicious noises coming from outside of the tent. Suddenly, one of the guys starts stabbing through the tent and catches her with a superficial blow to the leg before she can move away. It's Zack, and he drags her out of the tent by her hair, threatening to throw her to her death unless she gives up the camera. Panicking, Kelly confesses that it's in her backpack, but while he's busy searching for it, she grabs that metal shiv and starts stabbing the crap out of him. The assault forces Zack to retreat, but in the chaos, Kelly and her backpack begin to fall out too. Kelly grabs the knife just as she tumbles over the edge, barely managing to grab onto his shirt and catch the backpack with her foot. Zack starts screaming for the others to pull him up, with Kelly here stabbing him in the leg and tossing the bag back into the tent as she's lifted up towards the overhang. As soon as he sees her, Josh grabs Kelly by her hair, but she's able to escape by grabbing the knife and cutting herself free. Losing her grip, Kelly drops back down off of the cliff but catches herself on the tent at the last second, with the knife landing in the rocks not far away. Moments later, the cam holding the tent in place finally gives way from the abuse, but Kelly gets herself and the bag onto a safe ledge just as the shelter collapses and plummets down to the ground. Okay, that was a crazy fight, and Kelly's lucky to still be alive, but she made a bizarre choice there that almost cost her everything. Instead of diving onto Zack the minute that he started trying to pull her out, she should have held her ground in the shelter for as long as she could and continued stabbing him or trying to slice his rope from there. With any luck, she'd send him plummeting to the ground, and that would leave only two of them to contend with. She may have survived this round, but now that the fight is over, she needs to do anything that she can to prepare herself for whatever they're going to try next. It's gonna be stupid risky, but I'd suggest trying to get her hands on that knife, since it could be her only means of defending herself. Plus, now that Zack is too wounded to fight and Reynolds isn't really on Josh's side anyway, this could be her best chance to go on the offensive. I'd wait for the right moment when it seems like they're all asleep, sneak up there with the knife, and try to kill Josh before anyone knew what was happening. I mean, it would be risky for sure, but it's only a matter of time before sitting around on the side of a cliff and waiting for them to make the next move ends with her being killed, so if she has a chance to fight back at all, she needs to take it as soon as possible. Josh is furious, but they have to give up trying to get Kelly for now while they focus on taking care of Zack. Reynolds starts begging them to just let it go, arguing that at this point, Kelly is guaranteed to fall to her death sooner or later. With her dead and the camera destroyed, they can cover it up as nothing but an accident as long as the three of them stick to their story. Finally, Josh agrees to head back down first thing in the morning and call his fiance for help, but the truth is that he has other plans in mind. A couple stab wounds must have brought Zack to his senses because the moment that it looks like Josh is finally asleep, he starts whispering to Reynolds that they need to get the hell down from there before he bleeds out. The way he sees it, their only hope is to get a hold of Josh's survival watch and activate the built-in emergency beacon, which will call in a rescue team to their exact location. It's gonna be risky, but they have no other choice, and Reynolds agrees to take the chance. Crawling as quietly as he can, Reynolds makes his way over to Josh and goes for his watch. Just when he's about to grab it, Josh springs up out of his sleeping bag, 
tackling Reynolds to the ground and threatening to throw him over the edge before deciding that he's worth more to him alive than dead, at least for now. Enraged by their betrayal, Josh drops the bomb on Zack that he's been secretly hooking up with his girlfriend at a hotel every Friday night for years while he thinks that she's at a workout class, and she only tells Zack that she hates him as a way to cover it up. As if that wasn't bad enough, it turns out that Reynolds and Taylor knew about it the whole time, but never said a word. Furious, Zack lunges out at Josh, but he's too injured to do anything, and can only sit there helplessly at the mercy of this psycho. Josh goes back to taunting Kelly, offering her half a million dollars to give him the camera, and saying that they'll forget this all ever happened. Kelly, of course, doesn't buy it, which means that, for now, the stalemate will continue. Sometime later, when everyone is back asleep, Zack stumbles over to the edge to take a leak. Suddenly, Josh here creeps up from behind and clubs him in the back of the head with a climbing hammer, sending him hurtling down past Kelly to his death. A moment later, he tosses Zack's bag of climbing gear off the cliff too, making three down with three more to go. Okay, and in a shocking twist of events that we all saw coming, it looks like Josh here isn't planning on letting anyone but himself leave this mountain alive. I guess this is what you get for being friends with a homicidal maniac. Zack, you f up. This could have all been avoided if the three of you had just confronted him back at the campsite, but you got caught up in the group thing of covering up the crime instead of just letting Josh take the responsibility and face the consequences of his actions. Having your bros back is one thing, but participating in the killing of an innocent woman takes things just a bit too far, don't you think? And then you let Josh talk you into going after Kelly on the ledge, putting your own life in danger when this was really his problem to deal with. And ended up getting stabbed in the leg for your troubles. Most idiotic of all, though, was your decision to let your guard down around this maniac after he clearly just heard you and Reynolds scheming behind his back. You stuck your neck out and stayed loyal to a guy who was literally an insane killer and had no problems hooking up with your girlfriend on the side. Now you've died a horrible death, and he's still kicking, free to spin the story in any way that he wants to make himself look like a victim when everything that's gone wrong was entirely his fault. Hopefully Kelly can bring him to justice, but Zach, you, you f***ed up. When Reynolds wakes up, he immediately notices that Zack is missing. Josh here tells him that he decided to take the trail down, and said that he and Taylor would call for help as soon as he reaches the cabin, which is all an obvious lie. According to him, everything is going to be just fine, but they still have to take care of Kelly before the rescue team arrives. Josh starts getting ready to go after her, but Reynolds here volunteers to do it instead, pointing out that she'll be expecting trouble from Josh, but maybe not from him. He says that he'll make a deal with her to get the camera, and then as soon as she lets her guard down, he'll finish the job. Josh isn't sure if he trusts him at first, but in the end, he decides that he can make this work either way, and gives Reynolds the hammer before lowering him down over the edge while he keeps watch from above. The moment that she sees him, Kelly immediately gets ready for the fight of her life but Reynolds promises that he isn't going to hurt her. Instead, he offers her a can of food, apologizes for what happened to Sophie, and tries to explain his side of the story, saying how her death was really all Josh's fault. Reynolds promises that if she gives him the camera, then he'll convince Josh that she fell, and the rescue team that Josh is supposed to call will come up to save her. That's when Kelly hits him with the cold water that Josh killed Zack hours ago proving it by pointing out that there's no way that he could have climbed down the mountain alone with an injured leg, and adding that Reynolds himself is most likely next up on the chopping block. Still, Reynolds says that if she doesn't give him the camera, then Josh will end up coming down to get it himself. Realizing that she has no better option, Kelly finally hands over the camera, but she's not out of tricks just yet. As Josh gets ready to go back up, he tells her to scream as loud as she can, which should hopefully convince Josh that he made her fall to her death. Okay, now that Reynolds knows what happened to Zack, he needs to fight back before he's dead next. He has the camera and the hammer, so when he gets up there, he needs to toss the camera to Josh and distract him before immediately going for the kill shot. Even if he can't take him out fair and square, he can just try shoving him over the edge like he did Zack. And since Reynolds is still hooked in, he won't be in any danger of falling himself. 
Unfortunately, he's not going to make a move until it's already too late, and we're about to see how that works out for him. Spoiler alert, it's not good. The plan seems to work, at least for now, with Josh pulling Reynolds back up after he swears that he got the camera and took care of Kelly. As soon as he hands it over, Josh immediately realizes that she took out the memory card, making the camera itself completely useless. That's when Reynolds says that he's going to call Taylor, only to hear his friend's phone going off from inside of Josh's backpack. There's no hiding the truth anymore, and without saying another word to each other, the two of them immediately launch into an all-out battle to the death. Reynolds tries to hold his own, but Josh quickly overpowers him and starts beating him senseless with the hammer until he's unable to fight back. Grabbing the rope, Josh ties Reynolds up, douses him in lighter fluid, and drops a match, burning him alive before kicking his flaming body over the edge and sending it swinging towards Kelly. Horrified, she watches as Reynolds burns to death right in front of her, until the rope finally gives way and he falls out of sight. That makes four down with two more to go. Okay, that's a bad way to go out. Reynolds needed to clutch that fight, but now it's down to just Josh and Kelly. They would have had much better odds of winning the fight if it were a surprise two-on-one. Instead of letting him go up by himself, Kelly should have gotten the knife and climbed up right behind Reynolds, essentially using him as a meat shield. That way, she could have helped out a little while he was busy getting his ass beat. If they played their cards right, then Kelly could have attacked Josh while he was pulling Reynolds up and caught him defenseless and off guard. With Reynolds out of the picture, Kelly is the only one left standing who knows the truth about what Josh did. And she'll have to do better than him if she wants to make it out of this alive. Sitting atop the ledge, Josh polishes off the last of his booze before deciding that enough is enough. While he starts preparing to come after her, Kelly makes her way across the cliff and grabs the hunting knife from where it sits in the rocks. Next, she climbs over to grab her backpack, narrowly avoiding another large snake that's lurking near the bag. Seconds later, Josh lowers himself down and confronts her, promising that if she just gives him the memory card, then he'll at least do her the favor of making her death quick and painless. Kelly here isn't going for it, so she swings over towards her, and they immediately begin wrestling for the knife. That's when Kelly admits that she's hidden the card somewhere in the mountainside, saying that even if he kills her and gets away with it for now, then someone will eventually find it and learn the truth. Frustrated, Josh takes some swings at her with the hammer, and she retaliates by slicing him with the knife. He quickly realizes that this won't be as easy as he had hoped, and that's when he pulls out his last offer. He'll give her back her engagement ring if she tells him where to find the card. Finally, Kelly tells him that it's in a nearby hole in the wall, but when he sticks his hand inside to grab it, the snake lunges out and bites him. Now he's really mad, and swings back over to start beating the crap out of Kelly with his bare hands. Just when it looks like she's done for, Kelly knees him in the balls, slices the rope, and stabs him in the kidney, causing him to fall, but he manages to hold onto the ledge just below her. Now it's Josh who's begging for his life, and after letting him struggle for a moment, Kelly bends down as if she's going to help him, only to snatch the ring off of his neck, activating the emergency beacon on his watch. She waits until it's finished signaling for rescue before stepping on Josh's fingers, sending him plummeting to his death. That makes five down with one survivor, and Kelly finally has her revenge. With the ring and memory card in her possession, all that's left to do is climb up to the ledge and sit back while she waits for help to arrive. As the sun rises, she hears rescue helicopters approaching from the distance, and finally knows that she's going to be safe. Well, that was something, to say the least. I can't say I feel very bad for anyone involved in this film, though, because it seems like a lot of the decisions made were exactly the opposite of what any normal person would do. Am I right? But let us know what you would do down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How To Beat playlist for more videos just like this one. Thanks again for watching, and uh, oh yeah, have a damn good day.